In this Russell Talk news, the backstage WWE environment after investigation into Vince McMahon, more law firms investigating the company, more conflicting reports on Sasha Banks being released from WWE or not, and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk! It's been one whole week since the report from the Wall Street Journal aired announcing that an investigation was underway within WWE, with allegations against the then CEO and chairman Vince McMahon and head of talent relations John Laurinaitis of having a sexual relationship with a former paralegal within the company, which was then covered up with $3 million of hush money. Since then, Vince McMahon has managed to appear on our screens twice and said precisely nothing in both those appearances while also saying everything. But today is isn't about the fan reaction to his appearances, we've done a few videos on that now, but how WWE backstage is right now during this investigative period. According to a report from Mike Johnson of PW Insider, there is a lot of silence among employees as they're waiting to see how bad the situation can get and whether this could escalate into something that could really hurt the company. The overarching feeling reportedly seems to be to keep their heads down and to not get caught up in the mess, because they don't know what executives will end up with larger amounts of power after this is all said and done, so a lot of employees are biting their tongues when it comes to giving opinions, especially in any ways that could come back to bite them. With regard to Vince McMahon putting himself back on TV, there has reportedly been a lot of head shaking backstage, with some seeing it as an act of denial towards anyone questioning Vince. Though there is also reportedly speculation backstage whether this will come back to bite Vince in the long run. Some have reportedly wondered if this is the beginning of the end for Vince in WWE, but that is reportedly a minority that think that. The larger conversation has reportedly been about implementing more checks and balances in the company, but if they do, how could anyone enforce them on Vince? With Stephanie McMahon stepping back into the fold as the interim CEO and chairwoman, the reported feeling toward her backstage is one of sympathy, since she has been all but forced back to work not long after her leave of absence and wanting to distance herself from the company. Not only that, but some have reportedly marveled at how strong Stephanie has been, despite the public embarrassment of not only her father being caught up in this mess, but the humiliation of her mother, Linda McMahon, who was described as disrespected, as it's not just the one affair that is being investigated that has been uncovered. There are multiple NDAs of a similar nature. But of course, it's not just Stephanie who's had to fill in while this investigation runs, as the head of talent relations, John Laurinaitis, has been placed on administrative leave, and his role has been taken up by Bruce Pritchard, which some employees reportedly had mixed feelings on. Being happy Laurinaitis was out of the picture, but not being too thrilled Pritchard took his place. That dang monkey's paw! But it seems there's a very clear reason why Pritchard was chosen to take this role, despite him saying in the past he didn't like doing it, and it's all to aid Vince McMahon. Thank you for being awesome pledge hammers on Patreon, LIW's American Muscle, Tyler Gamola, and Will, I paid Adam to drink garlic and her dip on the live stream, Stuart. You can get your own shout out and loads of extra bonus content by visiting us at patreon.com forward slash wrestle talk. It's well known at this point that Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon have a long history together, and Pritchard is one of the few people that is part of Vince's inner circle, along other names like John Laurinaitis and Kevin Dunn. And according to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, this is exactly why he was picked to fill in Laurinaitis' role while he's on administrative leave. Another thing about Bruce being in this position pretty much tells me that Stephanie is a figurehead. It kind of tells you, as far as you know when it comes to a big move like that, that it's most likely still Vince making the calls, which is no surprise. When Vince made his first appearance on last week's SmackDown episode, I mentioned on my SmackDown review that I interpreted it as a statement of him saying that while he's not CEO and chairman in name right now, he's still the guy pulling the strings behind the scenes, and it seems that's exactly what's happening. It's been mentioned previously that talent weren't thrilled about Pritchard being appointed to the role, and according to the Mike Johnson PW Insider report, the general response he'd heard from people backstage was, who else were they going to choose? Which you know, fair point, given the level of trust Bruce has amongst the McMahon family. But this investigation has seemingly opened the floodgates for litigation against WWE. It had previously been reported that another law firm was looking to investigate the company and was looking for disgruntled shareholders who had been let down in the past by WWE. And now it's being reported by Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics that there are now five different law firms looking directly at WWE and seeking to speak to shareholders about class action lawsuits. Those five firms are 
Brega Eagle and Squire, Labaton Suchero, Rosen Law Firm, Scott and Scott, and Shaw Law Firm. I didn't butcher any of those names. The litigious sharks have smelled blood in the water and they're making their move. And it seems there's money to be made and potentially easily as the ongoing lawsuit between Vince McMahon and Oliver Luck over the XFL that had previously had settlement talks fizzle out in just nine minutes has now reportedly been settled. Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio noted that with everything else going on with Vince McMahon right now, it makes all the sense in the world that this lawsuit miraculously came to a settlement when it seemed settlement was out of the question just days prior. It's pretty clear that with all of the stuff on Vince's plate, that going through a trial right now was probably the worst thing possible because it would bring a lot of coverage on every little thing. And it was also a trial that nearly everybody thought he was gonna lose. So it would be a big public loss. And this is probably a way, as far as the publicity goes, to cut that loss. Before this, the allegations slash investigations becoming public happened, it was pretty adamant both sides weren't going to settle. Now's your chance, lawsuiters. This guy's paying out. And to add to the backstage environment not being all that great in WWE right now with people keeping their heads down, not being happy about Bruce Pritchard stepping in to fill Laurinaitis' role, not liking Vince McMahon appearing on TV, and the threat of more investigations and lawsuits coming soon, a former WWE employee has shared their thoughts of their time with the company, which wasn't very pleasant. In early 2020, writer Dan Ricketts joined WWE, where he would be working on a series of new podcasts for the company. In a new interview with MinMax, Ricketts opened up about his time with the company, which wasn't great, honing in on a particular example of coming up with a new podcast for the new day to do. They would fly in these experts, these podcast marketing experts from Beverly Hills. I got pulled into this room and there's this whole PowerPoint thing, and they're trying to think of ways to do a podcast with the New Day. The New Day, as a wrestling fan and a friend of those guys, the answer is let them talk because they are hilarious. They said, now we here at blank have a mad hookup with the Color Run people and WWE crushes epic podcasts. So why don't we use our mad hookup and you crushing your epic podcast to make the most epic podcast? I was just like, what does that mean? They said, Twitch is a live video game streaming platform where people can play games and chat with their friends. Fortnite is one of the biggest games out there. So what if we did something called, your boys are twitching? Of course they were like, well, we could brand that as like twitching with your boys or your boys are twitching. They were like, they can chat with their fans while shooting them in Fortnite. I was just like, what do you mean? What is that podcast? What is this product? Who is this for? Rickett went on to say he was creatively frustrated the entire time he worked for WWE, which yeah, I get it. That sounds genuinely horrendous. He also mentioned that these meetings would be straight out of a dumb comedy, which again, yeah, it definitely sounds like it. We're not a billion dollar corporation here at WrestleTalk or anything, but if anyone pitched your boys are twitching in the office, I don't think they'd ever live that down. And we've always had a 100% success rate with all our branding and videos here. No mistakes ever. And finally, let's talk about Sasha Banks some more, because although we reached a point where we all thought that we definitely knew whether Banks had been released or not following her walkout from the company just over a month ago, we still now don't know again because there's conflicting reports about it. It had previously been reported by Raj Giri that Banks had been released from WWE, and later on WrestleVotes backed up that report too. And while no other outlets could verify the info, no one could shoot it down either, with Andrew Zarian mentioning that he'd heard that Banks' lawyers had been working on it not long ago to make sure she was released, so it didn't seem all that surprising that it had then happened. But now we might be back to not knowing for sure, as Dave Meltzer mentioned on the Sunday Night Main Event podcast that WWE and Banks are still negotiating her release and that she hasn't actually been released yet. As far as I know, the only thing that I have been told is that they are negotiating it right now. I don't know that the negotiation is final. I know that it's been written in media reports that it is. The last I asked, which would have been two days ago, it was not final final, but it wouldn't shock me if it happened this week. That is how it was described to me a couple of days ago. Where it is at this moment, I don't know. So Banks is definitely released, but also might not be, but even if she is, she might be soon, unless she already is. Makes perfect sense to me. It's Quizzle Mania tonight, where Denise Salcedo is hosting the show. 
Oh God. But there's also Fan Quizzle Mania tomorrow too, where you get to compete in a Quizzle Mania 2 on our Patreon page. This month's show is co-hosted by Andy Datsun and Sullivan Brown, so head over to our Patreon page to sign up so you can compete too. Patreon.com forward slash WrestleTalk, link is in the description. In this WrestleTalk news, John Laurinaitis has been replaced backstage in WWE while investigations continue, Chris Jericho shoots on MJF, Luke's review of Raw, and more. 